CoachBeesDrivingSchool.com, also on Facebook. Make sure you check them out. And Randy's Auto Body, part of the show as well. We're on a Tuesday night. We're talking high school football with my good friend for a long time, Mike Berger, head coach of the Pittsburgh Wildcats. Coach, how are you? Good. Real good, Andy. How are you? Uh, we're going to talk about your team for a minute, but and I don't want to leave anybody at Pittsburgh hanging, but it's time for you to take over this Lions team. I'm sick and tired of it. Because let me tell you something. You're not afraid of success. You're not afraid of your own talent that you have out there. You utilize it. You're not afraid of it. And you're not afraid of your guys making mistakes. I've coached against you. I've watched you coach. You're an aggressive coach, and you're not afraid of success, unlike that sad sack coordinator in Detroit, Mike Lombardi, who's afraid of his own shadow. Will you, will you take over the Lions offense? I definitely know my limitations. There's zero chance that I would do that, of course, even if it was offered. Way beyond uh, my scope of abilities. A little would, difference between pro football and DA football. Would you, run, would you run dive, double dive, keep at the pro level? <laughs> no, I would not run dive, double dive, keep okay. at the pro level. Even if you had Grabowski? Well, I, you know, maybe if I had that fast of guys. And it was working. I mean, you know, <laughs> football is really simple. You just want to win. Winning's really all that matters. And if you don't win, you're pretty miserable. So, you know, I can I can definitely understand why you're so upset. I'm sorry sorry for burdening you with my uh, Lions angst here to start the interview. Uh, but you're off to another good season, 2-1 and one already this year. Uh, lost to Morency and then a good rebound game against North Adams. That's a, I, mean, I think, t- to be honest with you, I think Brian's got a decent team over there at North Adams. They have some seniors, and you guys handled them pretty easily. And then on September 11th, last Friday night against Wyoming, Tri Unity Christian. Let's go down through the list of these games real quickly and kind of get your thoughts about how your team performed. Uh, Morency's supposed to be pretty darn good. I know they beat Hudson in overtime, and uh, they got a little bit a little bit ahead of you early in that one. It kind of ran away with it uh, back on week one. Well, really, that that was closer than 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 the score indicated. Right. It was, you know, I know the score was a little lopsided. We made some mistakes. But we also learned a lot. We learned mm-hmm. a lot that day. We, we simplified some of our schemes, and we really talked about getting back to the basics, being fundamental, blocking, tackling. Uh, I thought we had a great week of practice leading up to the North Adams game, and I felt like we had a, you know, a, a good chance. I, you know, I, I do agree. I think North Adams got some good players, a lot of upperclassmen. They're pretty physical at the line of scrimmage and point of attack. Lige is a really good, Lige McKinney, really good lineman, and, and I like Stone, and their quarterback's coming around. He's playing better and better. I watched him last week against Camden. He's, but I, I thought we were really physical. And, you know, uh, that really is what it comes down to, is your level of physicality, how well you block, how well you tackle at the point of attack. You're not going to tell me this because I still am attached to the Camden Frontier program, and I know you're not going to give away any of your secrets, and I wouldn't if I were you either. Um, but just talking about the game of football on the radio and your philosophy, one thing that's always impressed me with Pittsburgh is, like you said, the physicality. I mean, you guys, uh, when I used to coach against you at the varsity level, by the end of the first half, our guys were hurting. I mean, they, they had taken punishment in that first half. And the way that you guys play in that physical style, I saw it at the middle school scrimmage. I saw it in the middle school team. Uh, you, you get it. You get your guys to play like that even when they're really young. And is it some kind of a mentality? Is it, some kind, is it the kids that you have? What, what is it that permeates that program that just brings out that physicality in your players? Well, I think, you know, as a classroom teacher, you really get what you emphasize you, right. and you get what you accept. And, uh, you know, as, as our, our, my philosophy is pretty simple. We want to be physical. Mm-hmm. We want to be physical at the point of attack. We want to be more physical than every team on our schedule. And, you know, and until we're that, at that point, I'm really not going to be satisfied. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and we're trying to get better and better and better. That's the plan. Be as physical as possible. Uh, tackle well in space. Uh, get many as many hats as we can to the ball as possible. Those are all things that really matter to me, and those are all things that we really emphasize. I didn't see any film on Wyoming Triunity Christian, but you win that game Friday night, twenty-five to nothing. Congratulations, your second you. straight win. Uh, talk us through a little bit of that one for us. Uh, they had some skilled athletes. Uh, you know, more of a, a spread team, which is definitely different than you know a North Adams or, or a Camden. They're more double type, more uh, old school football, I guess you could say. This is more of stuff you'd see on Saturday: jet, spread, gun. Uh, quick passing and, uh, you know, getting their athletes in space and then uh, forcing our athletes to make plays in space. And I, I thought our kids did a good job. First time that we really, we've really really seen a team like that, so I was pretty happy with how we tackled. I thought that we arrived uh, a lot of times with a lot of bad intentions. We had a lot of pressure on, our, on a quarterback up the field in the center and, uh, and on the edges. And then offensively, you know, we were able to assert ourselves running the ball, which is important. 
If you can run the ball, you're in the game. Mike Berger is the head coach over at Pittsburgh. They made the playoffs nine of the last 11 seasons, uh, including a state championship. Uh, uh, what was it, 96, when you guys won the state title with uh, Salazar and all of those mm-hmm. guys. And uh, since then, tremendous playoff run after tremendous playoff run. They were 7-3 and three last year and, again, qualified for the playoffs and uh, are hoping to make it again this year with the 2-1 and one start. Uh, you switch things up. I would always call your offense kind of multiple. You have good balance in the passing attack and the running game. What are you guys looking at? Uh, what do you look like offensively so far? What's your philosophy with this group? Well, you know, we're, we've adapted a, a little bit to our talent, of course, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, we're not like a pipeline. We get different kids every year. Right. And uh, so we have some, you know, Matt Rogers is in the backfield for us this year. He transferred in from Hillsdale, and we're really excited about having him. He's been getting better and better and better. Uh, Wyatt Price plays quarterback for us, and he can throw the ball, and, and he can run too. We haven't really let him out of the cage yet to run the ball, but he's very, very capable. Uh, Trey plays receiver. Trey Tenzie's a receiver for us, and, and Brady here, uh, who I brought with us, plays H-back and tight end. So we're multiple, but I would say we're – I mean, so the the re, or the or listeners get kind of an idea. We're kind of like Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we're going to have eye formation, two backs. We're going to smash it at you. Uh, we're going to go out of the gun here and there. Uh, you know, just be real multiple. And, uh, you know, we're going to take what you give us. If you don't want to cover, you want to give us cushion, we're going to pitch it out on the edges. And if you want to bring and put eight in the box, we're going to try to, you know, to get outside. And if you want to spread out, we're going to try to smash it, you know, off tackle. And just play, you know, take what you give us and then play good defense. Don't beat ourselves. Don't turn the ball over uh, and have really good special teams. And usually that's been a good recipe for me. Yeah, in it's our program. Uh, obviously the proof is in the pudding. Um, defensively, obviously, uh, with uh, Chris Hodis and the work that you guys do together, uh, it's intense over there on the sideline. I've been to a million of your games, and uh, you guys, uh, even in the game, there's intensity and there's coaching going on all game long. Yeah, I, I think that you have to, you know, if you love what you're doing, you're going to have passion. That's right. And passion moves people to action, and it motivates people, and, and we certainly want to be very passionate about what we're doing, and, and uh we want to push and push to, to try to get the very best out of our kids, to have them believe in themselves and believe in our our program and uh, represent our community well. It's interesting because you mentioned you don't have a pipeline. Like Hudson runs the same offense every year. They run that right. full house backfield, double tight. And I'm sure that Coach Luma gets different guys in and out, but they go with the same offense every single year. And I know Climax Scotts does the same thing. You know, Coach Langs will change it up a little bit, but it it generally stays pretty much the same. For you guys, a lot of it stays the same. You're still physical. Mm-hmm. You're still physical. You're going to try to get out and hit somebody. Um, but offensively, you've had some flexibility. Yeah, uh, you know, I know what you're talking about. Like some years we're in split backs and we run our double right. dive series, and some years we're in the I formation. And a lot of that depends on the ability and of the of the uh, the running backs per mm-hmm. se. Right. You know, at the line of a line of scrimmage, it is about physicality and getting right. to the second level and you know footwork and fundamentals. But if we don't have you know, it's a certain type of back to run dives. Right. And you got to have a tough, you know, super quick downhill type running back to run a double to run the dive slant keeper series and you know, not, I'm not taking anything away from the guys we have this year because I love them, love them to death. But they wouldn't be good in that kind of series. But they are good in the I formation, mm-hmm. and and they they do real good there. So that's why we went to that. Like I said, we simplified some of our schemes. We were trying to run some pull stuff early, more like what you see on a Saturday at a college level, powers and counter tray, and and it was just taking too long for us to execute. So since we've gone simpler, it's been better. I'll talk to the quarterback here, Wyatt Price, for a second. He's a senior running QB and corner. Uh, Wyatt, uh, how has your game kind of changed and evolved in the last couple of years, and and how confident are you in the system that you're running right now? Um, I've been getting a lot stronger since my freshman year, lifting weights with the team and everything, and uh, going from uh, more of a running quarterback to a passing quarterback over the years. So when you go out there out of play, let's say it's a pass play, do you have the green light to run if the if the play is not developing downfield, or do you try to throw the route no matter what? Um, they give me the freedom to run. I'm always looking for either to throw the ball or run it upfield. How much coverage response? I mean, how much do you have to be able to read coverages to run Coach Berger's system? Um, it's it's pretty basic. Reading the corner out through the outside linebacker, and that's pretty much it. You guys have, in the past, I haven't seen any film on you this year, but you've run a lot of play-action passes. Uh, 
you know, faking, you know, establishing the run, then faking that run and getting into the passing game. Um, have you worked a lot on just perfecting that play action fake so you can really freeze those backers? Um, oh yeah, we all, we always work on our play action um, pass plays every practice, getting it down the fakes, making sure it's perfected. And senior year, man. I mean, you got to want to get back into the playoffs for your senior year, right? Uh, we're looking, we're looking forward to that. Absolutely. And I, I think you're on your way. Trey Tenzie is a wide receiver and cornerback. Uh, you okay with Wyatt Price and the uh, performance he's uh, put on the board so far this year? Uh, yeah, I think Wyatt does <laughs> a really good job. Just. Uh making sure he gets a ball out there, even if he does have a lot of pressure coming at him. Do you uh, go over to the sidelines as a wide receiver and uh, kind of lobby for more passes to be thrown your way? Uh, sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> you just got to have to go with whatever the offense is offering and whatever you can run against a defense because sometimes there's just a defense and you can't get it to everybody. You and you to... recognize that. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, as a wide receiver, it's fun to get chances to help your team. And if, you f- if you're confident in what you're doing and you put in your time and, and you're getting open – You'd like the football, right? Yeah, but sometimes you just don't get it. You have to understand that. <laughs> that's a very, very good the coach sitting right by you. That's an excellent response to that. Uh, this senior class. Block downfield, right, yeah. Trey? Block get a down block down downfield. Field. That's right. Yeah. This senior class, and we have four of them here right now. Um, I mean, can you believe you're a senior already? No. It, uh, <laughs> it seems like yesterday he was playing JB as a mm. freshman and sophomore. That it just went by really quick, but I'm excited for my senior year. Let's bring in uh, Bradley Monahan. Or Brady Monahan? Sorry about that. How does coach? You know, we talked about the physical style that Pittsburgh plays. How does coach sort of sell you on that style and get you to play with that kind of physicality? Oh, uh, he's real intense in practice. Mm-hmm. Always making sure you do perfect every play, every snap. And if you're not physical, you're going to hear about it from the coach. Oh yes, definitely. Who's more intense, Coach Berger or Coach Hodas? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, it had to be, yeah, right Coach there. Bird. I don't know. <laughs> it's about the same. I'd say it's about the same. They're both pretty intense, huh? Yeah. yeah. Good answer. And, and as the tight end, do you get into that play-action passing game a little bit? Yeah, I got. I run through linebackers, hunts and crosses. It's. I like it. Yeah. You have you scored yet? No, not yet. Okay. Season's early. Oh, Still yeah. got uh, way more than a third of it to go. Middle linebacker for Pittsburgh. I mean, they've had some incredible backers over the year. I know you guys get coached really well, and you like to punish people, don't you? Oh, yeah, I love it. Love every minute of it. <laughs> These are your kind of guys right here, Mike. I understand why you brought them with you. Uh, Matt Rogers is another senior playing safety. And, uh, Matt, what has it been like for you to join this Pittsburgh football program? It's been a, it's been a really fun experience. Mm-hmm. It's a lot different going from Hillsdale, but – I've learned a lot from Pittsburgh, and I learned a lot from Hillsdale, and I've enjoyed being at both schools. Uh, you play for two good coaches. Yeah, uh, really I, good Coach coaches. Lem is a great football coach. Obviously, Coach Berger is an awesome coach, and two pretty darn good high school football programs that have had a lot of success. I mean, if you had to play for two in Hillsdale County, Hillsdale and Pittsburgh's not bad. I mean, yeah. Pittsburgh, uh, nine out of the last 11 years have been in the playoffs. I think Hillsdale's, what, 13, 14 years straight? In a row, yeah. So Something you know like what that. I mean? I mean, that, yeah. you've hit the two ones that you yeah, probably want to be part of. Uh, where have you fit in on the team, coming in like you did, uh, not growing up like these guys have together? Uh, how have they accepted you, and how have you fit in? Well, at first it was different. I really only knew a few kids right. from going to Hillsdale. And you know, as like it's been a month or so, month or two since I've been on the team, and a kid accepts accepts me more and more every day. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and like I've made a lot of new friends, and I still don't know everybody yet. Like I don't want to just go up and talk to a lot of the kids. On mm-hmm. the kids on the team, I know, but no, that makes sense. Now yeah. you can, you're playing running back. Have you gotten some carries already? Yeah, quite a few carries. Is it fun? Yeah, it's different. Sometimes I mean I get scared sometimes. I really don't like getting hit that much. So the honesty, but, <laughs> I appreciate the honesty there. But it's um, a lot of fun. But you like uh, being part of the scheme and part yes. of what they're doing and and mm-hmm. trying to make plays. Uh, as a safety in this defense, so we talked about the physicality. And I'm sure Coach Lem emphasizes a lot of the same things. But yeah. uh, you know, Pittsburgh really does. I think they intimidate teams. I think they get in your head a little bit because you know you're going to get popped. Where I always saw it a lot when I was coaching against Mike was on special teams. They would just light us up on special teams and really took pride in hurting my players during special teams. And I'm not saying that in a dirty way or a cheap shot way, but they're trying to get out there and hurt you. Uh, And it's a physical game, isn't it? Yes, it's a very physical game. We've done really good on special teams so far this year. Mike, I don't think we've talked a lot about that in the past. 
you guys are great at special teams, and it, it shows in the emphasis that you put in it on practice. That's something that you take very seriously, isn't it? I, you know, that's a huge part of the or a huge phase of the game. You know, that third phase of the game, special teams that nobody really talks about. You know, you don't hear about that a lot of times unless there's big plays being made in special teams. But they usually change the the scope of the game. Uh, Coach Clement uh, does a good job with our special teams. Uh, we emphasize that every day. We we, we you know we do it a special team period almost every single day. Uh, and, you know, if things aren't right the way we want them, we do it again and again and again and again and again until it is done. And, uh, you know, it makes a difference because you can make a big play, you can break a team's back with special teams, you get a big hit, it creates some in- an intensity and some emotion, uh, and then you're on, on the run on offense making plays, and uh, it's exciting. You know, the crowd gets into it when you have those big punt returns, and it's all things that, that we talk about, you know, and, and a lot of that is hustle plays, getting in the position, because you'll see like blacks in the back, and usually that's because kids were lazy. They didn't, they loafed. They didn't get where they want to be. So you got to make them do those things, and and uh, that's all done in practice. You practice the way you play. You play the way you practice. You know, I don't think that enough credit goes to the coaches locally. I'm gonna let you guys go after this. You know, I I've gotten to know um, Coach Lemeron a little bit. I'm, Super guy. I've gotten to know Coach Brad Felix at Hillsdale High School a little bit. I've gotten to know you you a little bit. And one thing that's in common, I think you're three of the best coaches in our county. I think what's in common with you is the maniacal preparation that you guys put into this. I, I've been to little league tournaments with you, and you've got your football notes out, and you're quizzing yourself over what you're going to do in certain situations. I mean, I, this doesn't happen by accident. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of preparation and a lot of film study. And and you and Brad and Lem and some of the other coaches in the area – you guys have decided that it's worth it to put in that much time, and it's worth it every Friday night when your fans and your community get to see you guys play. Well, I, I can't speak for Coach Lemoran or Coach Felix, I'm both great guys and good coaches. Uh, I respect a great deal, but for me, you know, it comes down to a couple different reasons. You know, I, I know that that's all true. I did do that. I carry my stuff all over the place. It really, I think sometimes it irritates my wife. She's like, "Can't you just put that <laughs> stuff away?" Uh, but I really hate losing. And uh, losing makes me miserable. It makes everybody, you know, I'm a terrible loser. I want to win. I want to. I want to do well for our community. And most importantly than anything else, I want the kids to to really realize that when you are passionate about something that you really care about, that you can do great things. And if you really invest yourself, you know, good things will happen. And you know, I don't know if there's enough uh, enough focus on on teamwork and team sports and team bonding. But I have great memories from my, my high school days. Mm-hmm. I have great memories from my college days when I played college basketball. Uh, I, you know, I just want to. I want these guys to win. I want them to be to feel successful and and to feel part of something that's bigger than themselves. And uh, hopefully they do that. But you know, it really comes down. It, these guys will tell you if we don't win, it's it's. I'm just miserable. And uh, and we we say all the time that winning is important. It's not the most important thing, but losing stinks. That's right. And uh, that that's big for us. They play Pittsburgh plays at home. They're going to host Camden Frontier on Friday night. Then you have Colon, and then of course it's always a great showdown with Climax Scotts. Uh, I guess Coach Langs is just loaded again this year, and that's going to be another battle. But uh, you guys have a great chance again to to reach that six win total and get into the playoffs. Uh, Mike Berger and and all you guys. Thank you for coming in. We wish you all the best. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Andy. Coach Mike Berger, and he's a heck of a coach, and that's a heck of a football program over there at Pittsburgh. They will host Camden Frontier on Friday night. Hillsdale College Chargers quarterback C.J. Mifsud is our guest. We'll talk to him right after this timeout on the Timeout Show.